Many developers are being asked to add AI to their applications. My boss is asking me to do that too. Yeah, we're all being asked to do this and it can feel a bit overwhelming. Right? Where do I even start? Well, it becomes a lot easier if you think about AI as just another API. It's so good to have you back on Serverless Expeditions again, JK. Good to be here, Martin. It's been almost a year. Uh, what do you do these days? All kinds of things. I'm helping teams with testing and automation, as well as helping some startups with scaling problems. Recently, I've been building some apps which digest huge amounts of information quickly to provide user readable summaries in seconds. Right. AI has huge potential. Uh, it almost seems like magic. Yeah, AI is this mysterious thing that everyone seems to understand. But once you get past the, wow, look at this, glam, it, the underside is just another web app that calls an API. This is good news for developers. Why is that? Well, web apps that call APIs are well-traveled ground. Your apps are probably calling APIs already. Yeah, uh, most of my apps call a database API to read and write data. And for most apps, that's all AI is, just another API. Years ago, AI was really hard, and it took months to train a model, and the result was barely passable as intelligent. But now, generative AI, aka LLMs, have changed what we call AI. APIs make this really easy to get going quickly. Could you show me what you mean? Sure can. Let's say we want to build an app that helps users with tech support. The user would enter their question here. For example, my printer is not working. <laughs> it's always the printer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, printers cause a lot of trouble. All right, here we got a reasonable response for how to fix the printer. All right, and how would you build this kind of app? Oh, I would start in AI Studio. Here, I can experiment with different system prompts. For example, I can tell the AI that it is a helpful tech support person, helping the user with computer problems. And then the user's input goes in the text box below? That's right. I would enter the user's question. For example, my printer is not working. I would tweak the system instructions at the top and experiment with the same user input below until I'm happy with the result. Ah, got it. And then it's time to write code? That's right. But I don't have to write a lot of code because I can click the Get Code button over here on the right and copy the code that comes up. In this case, I will copy the JavaScript version. I'll paste it into the Express Request Handler. This will run on the server in Google Cloud. I got this skeleton code by asking Gemini a few questions and then tweaking what it gave to me. Here, it creates a Google Generative AI object with my API key. And here, it creates a model from that object. I'm using Gemini 2.0 Flash in this case. And here is the system instruction we saw before. My code sets some config values, and then it calls the gener generate content function on the large language model. Finally, it returns the output to the caller. That server-side code is called by index.html which displays a form with a label, a text box, and a submit button. When the user clicks the submit button, this fetch command sends a HTTP request to the server-side code to trigger it. Very good. I will add a link to your code uh, from the video description. And now, how would you get this code deployed up into the cloud? Well, my code is in TypeScript, so I added a build command to my package JSON. That build command creates JavaScript code based on my TypeScript code. So first, I'll run that. I want Google to handle my server for me, so I'll use cloud functions. I created this deploy command, and it runs gcloud functions deploy to deploy my code to a cloud function. So let's run that now. That command deploys my server-side code. I will also need to deploy index.html. It will be served as a static file to users, so I'll set up Firebase hosting. I've run Firebase init already to set up and configure my project. So now I can just run Firebase deploy. That uploads my index.html to Firebase hosting. So now you have a front end and a back end, uh, just like any other web app? That's right. My application uses AI, but it's really just a traditional web app. 
It has a HTML front end that sends a HTTP request to the back end when a user clicks a button. The back end calls an API and then returns a response that will be displayed to the user in the HTML page. The API happens to connect to a large language model. That's all. Nice. Uh, not too complicated. Yeah, I think so. Once the deployment's done, the app is available on the public internet. And I can ask tech support a question about my monitor flickering or my printer not working. And I got a helpful response back. Pretty simple. Yes, this is a simple app, but it shows how far you can get with just the right system prompt and a large language model. The LLM is just another API, and we know how to call APIs. We could add other APIs to make this app more powerful. For example, we could add a database that contains past purchases and a product catalog. Then, if we tweak the system prompt, the app can provide personalized product recommendations. <laughs> Everything is just another API. I like it. Yep, it's a great time to be a developer. <laughs> I agree. Well, thank you for sharing your uh, perspective and your code with us, JK. Thank you so much for having me, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions, please add them in the comments. Also, please let me know what you think of this episode. I read every single comment. Until next time.